It's that time of the month and you've suddenly found out that you're out of what you need. When you waltz into the store to spend an outlandish amount of money for something you physically cannot live without, you're met with a plethora of options. But which one will you choose? Your mind flashes back to all the commercials, all the ads you've seen on TV and on the internet. And surely you don't wanna go with the company that uses that stupid blue liquid to showcase its product, right? Like why are we even doing that in the first place? You seriously doubt that buying from a brand that uses peppy, sporty, excited models in the advertisements will give you the same feeling. But wait, there is one company that seems to advertise its products in a more accurate way, Thinks. The underwear for your time of the month It's as easy as getting dressed and going about your day, even if your day is just laying around with some fried food and some chocolate cake. Their advertisements are enticing and the company is run by the girl boss of all girl bosses. And we invented Thinx, it's T-H-I-N-X. And it's a beautiful pair of underwear that's breathable, washable, comfortable, but also you'll never leak or stink through them. In fact, I'm wearing them right now. (laughs) I can show you. There you go. Yeah. Mickey Agrawal seems to have won every reward for her company and innovation under the sun. She prides herself on women's empowerment and complete transparency. So far, there's no reason not to buy the underwear, except maybe the price. But in the long run, you might actually spend less because of the stupid tampon tax. The so-called tampon tax. Known as the tampon tax. Yes. The tampon tax. Tampon tax. Tampon tax. So like millions of other people, you decide to go ahead and buy them. What could go wrong? Well, you could find out that everything was a lie. Mickey wasn't this magical, awesome, sweet woman trying to make the world a better place. She had been treating her employees terribly for years, was accused of sexual harassment, and doesn't seem to take accountability for anything literally ever. That whole honesty thing, apparently that's a lie too, both for Mickey and her company. It turns out that incredible organic chemical-free product might not be all it's cracked up to be. Yeah, Thinks wasn't the saving grace we all thought it was, but at this point, are we really surprised anymore? Well, I mean, like maybe not surprised, but certainly annoyed and frustrated by the entire situation. So what is the full story of the period underwear company that went bad? Let's find out on today's episode of The Corporate Casket. Now, of course, I'm the Illuminati or Blair Zahn. Hello, they can call me either. That's fine, Lumi also works. And before we dive right on into this really disgraceful situation, I just wanna give a quick shout out to all of my patrons over at patreon.com slash Illuminati. If you're interested in becoming a patron member, the links will be in the description box in the little link tree link, literally like wherever it is there. Feel free to become a patron and see what all the buzz is about. When Thinx first came out with its groundbreaking marketing, people seemed to rejoice. First off, we weren't seeing those stupid commercials with people with their time of the month running around on a soccer field instead of laying in their bed crying, surrounded by chocolate and a heating pad, because let's be honest, that's the actual experience of a lot of folks. Instead, the Thinx advertisements decided to go in a more realistic direction, poking fun at the promotions of the past. Despite their little fight with the New York City subway system, who thought the ads were too slightly realistic to the point of being inappropriate, The company's advertisement campaigns for a product that didn't involve a string or a diaper-like mechanism seemed to absolutely explode. The new underwear brand was all the rage and the entrepreneur superstar who created the company, Mickey, was raking in the praise. Her business had been named in the most innovative companies list by Fast Company and was included in Time Magazine's 25 Best New Inventions. By most accounts, the new CEO, and yes, this is actually what she called herself, which should have been the first big red flag, was girl bossing her way to disrupting a multi-billion dollar industry and introducing a new product to the world that could change menstruating people's lives. She also developed a plan to donate a portion of all things proceeds to women's organizations around the world. This woman sounded like a saint, but while the praises were rolling in, there was something much different going on in the background. I mean, truthfully, if she was this wonderful, we wouldn't be talking about her today. As it turns out, Mickey may not have been the little ray of sunshine she portrayed to the world, and her view on feminism definitely raised a few eyebrows. Her company and her brand were meant to be a feminist utopia. 
I mean, a company that is actually honest about their marketing for menstrual products and claim to be solving all the previous failures of the past options, yeah, pretty feminist. Like, hell yeah, thank you for actually thinking about us. But for Mickey, this claim was almost insulting. In an interview, she proudly announced that she actually doesn't relate to feminism because, quote, every time I thought about the word feminist, I thought about the angry, ranty girl. And okay, I'll hand it to you. Feminism, especially white feminism, definitely has its issues. But this type of quote just falls into the same rhetoric that people against equality frequently use when trying to weaken the movement. If you're trying to create and promote a brand by women for women with all the best girl boss intentions, then this probably isn't the right mindset to be in. For Mickey though, this was just a tiny drop in the bucket in relation to all the other terrifying things she has allegedly done and said. According to her employees, the founder who had the world by the heart and the purse strings was wasn't as bubbly and kind as she appeared to the public. She wasn't even close. On Glassdoor, six of the nine reviews that were available back in 2017 were aggressively negative. One called Mickey a time bomb and a liability, while another called her a bully. Of course, there were some good ones about her, but some of the employees claimed that people had either been pressured to write good reviews or that Mickey had written one herself. They jokingly referred to it as the Glassdoor Wars. As time went on, the accusations just kept getting worse. Employees who talked to The New Yorker said that Mickey, who ran the alleged body positive company, continuously fat shamed her employees and commented on their bodies behind their backs. When the office had its ice cream Fridays, Mickey apparently told people the treat should be changed to fruits because the employees were too heavy. She also allegedly suggested a team-wide no sugar detox. So. That doesn't sound very body positive to me, but okay. Apparently though, the fat shaming was just the beginning of Mickey commenting on her employees' appearances. She had a habit of doing that a lot. So much so in fact, that employees of the company have claimed that she sexually harassed them. In 2017, Mickey found herself to be the subject of a sexual harassment lawsuit filed by the former head of public relations at the company, Chelsea Libo. The allegations were horrific, might I add. When Chelsea first arrived at the company, she was comforted by the openness and honesty, but only a month after arriving, it seemed like the script had flipped. Suddenly, Mickey was telling Chelsea that she had an obsession with her breasts and even touched Chelsea without her permission. Slowly but surely, it became a pattern. Mickey would apparently comment on how Chelsea's breasts looked in multiple outfits. Mickey would even change in her glass-walled office, exposing herself to staff. And when she was confronted about it, she simply said, I forgot that's not a normal thing to do until you brought that up. Like, no shit, Mickey. No matter how open and free your office is, changing in front of your staff and sexually harassing them are certainly not normal fucking things to do. And just going like, oh yeah, like I totes my goats forgot. Like, babe, no, what the fuck? Like you founded this company, you can't be stupid too. Additionally, she allegedly told her assistant repetitively how hot she thought she was, talked to her employees in detail about her sex life, and told a detailed story of how one of her employees had her nipples pierced to multiple audiences during a talking tour. And that is of course, without the employee's permission. So yeah, bad is kind of an understatement. Eventually, after voicing complaints multiple times, Chelsea was fired. After the ordeal, Chelsea told the world how she felt saying, quote, I felt that Mickey objectified my body when she declared that she was obsessed with it and made very detailed comments about my breasts. And it also seemed like a way for Mickey to assert her dominance over female employees by simply doing whatever she wanted to do without asking and showing she could get away with it. And in my opinion, Chelsea seems absolutely correct here. This was 100% objectification and disgusting behavior from a person that claimed to be all about women's empowerment, openness, and togetherness. This was not a safe environment for women to work in. And with literally no HR staff at the company, there was not one employee who could go to voice their concerns about the founder. If that is an intimidation tactics, then I don't really know what is. But Mickey, not shockingly, adamantly denies all the claims against her and even wrote her own blog post to tell her side of the story. She acknowledges that she made mistakes, some of the biggest being that she didn't hire an HR person in the beginning. She claims that Chelsea showed her nipple piercings to her joyfully, but never addresses the accusations that she had told the story to massive groups of people or the other claims of sexual harassment for that matter. In the end, she simply said, I learned that these kinds of things could get twisted out of context after employees get fired and used as extortion tactics to try and get money. Eventually after two years, the allegations against Mickey were dropped in court, so they will simply remain as allegations. 
Still, that doesn't give Mickey or her company for that matter, a free pass. Because beyond the alleged fat shaming and sexual harassment, there were other things going on within Thinks that make it sound like a hellscape of a working environment. Unfortunately, Mickey's extremely concerning and allegedly super predatory behavior is not the only thing the employees had to deal with when working for Thinks. While many joined because they believed in the mission and the sales pitch of empowerment, they would soon come to learn that that message seemed to be only reserved for their customers, definitely not for the staff. While Thinks was generating tens of millions of dollars in revenue, the staff was apparently being left behind. Many who spoke to reporters anonymously said that they had taken a pay cut or accepted their jobs at below market rate salary. In fact, some say the jobs were paying roughly $30,000 below the market rate, but that's pretty understandable for a startup and the employees were sure that they would be able to make it up later when they exploded in popularity, but that's not what happened. Instead, people that attempted to negotiate a raise even after taking on higher titles were allegedly dismissed as ungrateful. And as a general reminder, there was no HR department here. So all of this was being handled directly by Mickey. Apparently, when people would come to her asking for a raise, she would tell them that they were young, that they were only in their 20s and that they didn't need money to live. Money right after getting out of school and moving out on your own is definitely not important at all, right? Like people can just get through life with a smile and some lollipops. I'm sure the landlord will accept those as rent payment, right? In a pretty ironic twist of fate, there were at least two people who did successfully get a raise in the beginning. It was two of the few white men who worked at the company. So interesting. The situation almost immediately got worse when in 2016, a spontaneous email let the staff know that their paid vacation days were being slashed from 21 to 14 days a year. And there was no more health insurance, which before it was cut allegedly cost about $200 per month at the cheapest rate. When the staff had an all hands meeting, some employees began to cry, but Mickey was allegedly unfazed. Then there was also the parental leave policies. Now the United States by itself is already pretty shitty at providing parental leave. When looking at 41 developed countries, the United States is the only one that doesn't mandate companies give parental leave to their employees. Isn't that just lovely? But even with the standards for this benefit, which should be a given being on the damn ground, things still seem to shock everyone by how little they offered. They were supposed to be a woman-centered company after all. Just how bad was it, you ask? Two weeks, that's it. Two weeks leave at full pay. After that, they got one full week at half pay and then uh, you're just screwed, I guess. For those who haven't had a baby or who just don't know, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists recommend at least six weeks off work after giving birth. So in essence, Thinks was willing to pay for half of it. But don't worry, they gave the non-birthing parents something too, and it was still awful one full week at full pay and one week at half pay, because honestly, after that, like who needs to take care of the baby, right? It can just take care of itself. So you're already paying these people under market value. Some were saying they couldn't even afford birth control. I seriously doubt they were even able to save. Then to top it off, you expect them to either go three weeks at least without pay to stay home with a baby or go back to work when it was physically and emotionally bad to do so. And all of this comes from a company that sold its whole product under a woman's empowerment stance. Clearly that was all bullshit and they in no way practice what they preach. And listen, I get it was a startup and those are hard and the company exploded quickly, but we're talking about like the bare minimum here. Pay your employees a living wage, give them parental leave and don't sexually harass them. It's really not that hard. Mickey eventually addressed these issues with the public in her little, don't be mad at me, I'm a human who makes mistakes blog post. And don't worry about the minimal pay. She took the team on a magical team retreat weekend to Shakespeare on the Hudson. So that fixes everything. She also proudly announced that almost all of the team was able to get bonuses for hitting their sales targets. Sure, they didn't get market-based pay at first, but the bonuses at the end of the year made up for all of that, except it didn't. She casually didn't bring up an explanation for the horrid parental leave policy either. Eventually, all of these things would come to bite the company squarely in its ass. 10 people quit the 30 person team and Mickey thankfully stepped down as CEO. I'm sorry, <clears throat> CEO. Don't worry about her though. She has two other companies now and I'll be sure to keep an eye on those after everything I've just learned. Now this brand was in rebuild mode, looking to remold its image and keep its rapid growth in an upward trend. Enter Maria Moland. The new powerhouse executive came in to save the day and save thanks from certain death. She hired two human resource employees because obviously, 
beefed up the benefits package and changed the family leave to 12 weeks fully paid. That sounds a hell of a lot better and makes a lot more sense for a company with this type of branding. This new working environment saved the company from the brink of disaster and doubled the staff. Because, and I know this is shocking, people want to work for companies with good benefits, good pay, and a good mission. I know, it's kind of crazy, but it's a thing. I'm just shocked at this completely new revelation. While you may think though that this is the end of the think story, you would be wrong. Sure, their company dynamics had improved exponentially, but what about the product? Well, as it turns out, the magical period panties had some pretty serious problems of their own. When you think about it, it's really no surprise that things got so big in such a quick amount of time. The marketing was incredible, and people who menstruate are sick and tired of the same old products that are either outrageously uncomfortable or inherently dangerous. I'm sure one or two of us have freaked out about toxic shock syndrome. I have all the fricking time. You know, when you leave the tampon in just a little too long, you guys know the deal. Let's be honest, it's pretty terrifying. I've absolutely freaked out. One time I fell asleep with one and I woke up and I was like, this is it, I'm gonna die. This is how it ends. Like we've all been there, I'm sure. So when things came out with the most elegant period product most of us had never seen, it's not really surprising that people ate that up. It couldn't be more simple. Just throw on some underwear and go about your day. It was the stress-free period protection. Their advertisements had made people believe that the underwear was safe, healthy, and sustainable. Not usually the words used for period products, right? But there were some issues. First off, how did they even work? Now, if you Google it, you would assume that, yeah, they're great because influencers exist and people get paid to promote products. However, there was one review I found that was incredibly in-depth, might I add, that made me start to think a little bit differently. The independent reviewer said that Thinks was not by any means a free flow product, meaning it couldn't replace the other items you were using, it was just meant to be used in addition to them. Then there was the price, which was admittedly pretty steep. Four pairs of underwear cost a little more than $100. If they worked well, maybe it was worth it, but if they didn't, then not so much in my eyes. But the review is really the least of the concerns when it comes to Thinks. What's even more concerning is their safety. Remember, they were supposed to be sustainable and safer than what we've had before, but soon it was discovered that this wasn't necessarily the case. In January, 2020, Sierra Magazine published an investigation that found PFAS in the crotch area of Think's underwear. PFAS are human-made chemicals that do not break down and are linked to multiple health issues. These can range from a disruption of hormonal functions to accelerated ovarian aging and period irregularities. For pregnant women, PFAS has been associated with a plethora of problems like high blood pressure and preeclampsia. So in essence, they're not something you just want to be exposed to for a long period of time. Plus, since they're kind of forever chemicals and they never break down, our bodies can't metabolize it either. Of course, Thinks sprang into action to deny this and hired two consultants to dispute the findings. Shortly after, they did a little editing of their promotional material. No longer did it promise that PFAS was nowhere in their underwear. Now it simply said they were free of PFOA, which is a little suspicious, a little weird. Despite their efforts to alter their material, a lawsuit came rolling their way. And while you think it may have focused on the safety of the products, the class action actually focused on the marketing. Thinks had been telling the world that their products were organic, sustainable, and non-toxic. And as it turns out, it wasn't true. According to attorneys, this made the superstar product effectively useless. To no one's surprise, Thinks completely denies that they have misled their customers and a spokesperson told NPR that PFAS had never been involved in their product and they took the effort to ensure that there were no chemicals in their underwear. But the big problem was is it was still found in the underwear, so clearly they weren't trying that hard, at least not in my opinion. Regardless, Thinks still came to a settlement in the class action lawsuit in January, 2023. Though the settlement does not mean that Thinks admits to any guilt or wrongdoing because of course. The terms of their agreement guaranteed refunds for people who had bought their product between 2016 to 2023, but don't get too excited about those because they're kind of flimsy. If you were to apply for them, you could get $7 back if there is a receipt and $3 if there wasn't. As many people mentioned on Twitter, this was pretty lackluster for underwear that cost $35 individually. As one user said, the settlement amount is trash. There's something inherently upsetting about a product claiming to be safe and chemical free in this specific space. People have been searching for products they can use without having to worry about the health implications for longer than anyone can remember. And just when we think we finally have one, it turns out that it was a lie. 
then you can only get a very, very tiny portion of your money back even after they've been sued for it. There's a long history of a lack of oversight in the world of hygiene products, and a lot of products have never been fully tested or understood. Basically, we've been flying blind for a while. But when companies say their products are safe and organic, we hope that we can trust them. Unfortunately, things seem to have proved that this isn't the case, and other products are coming under fire for making the same false promises. And before we take a look at more companies making false promises about hygiene products, we're gonna take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. Gentle reminders for the new year. Check in with yourself before offering to help someone else. Rest when you need rest and ask for what you need and say yes to more things that make you feel good. Transport your mind to a world where you can relax and treat yourself to your deepest desires with Dipsy. Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories. They bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. New content is released every week, so in between listening to your favorite stories again and again, you can always find something new to explore. And they also have soothing sleep stories, wellness sessions, and even sexy stories you can read if that's more of your vibe. So let Dipsy be your go-to place to spice up your me time, explore your fantasies, relax and unwind, or heat things up with a partner. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com casket. Again, that's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash casket, dipsystories.com slash casket. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, then why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. I've been using Mint Mobile for over two years now. I think we're about, what, two and a half-ish years at this point, and I've loved my phone service. It's almost time for an upgrade. I know it's gonna be super easy. Now they even have eSIM, so you can just do it like digitally or whatever. It's very cool, might I add. And it's super easy. With Mint Mobile, you can get a new phone and a new phone number, or you can bring your own. Either works. And all Mint Mobile plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. So to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash casket. That's mintmobile.com slash casket. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash casket. Now listen, I know we're all sick of tampons and pads. They're uncomfortable, they're dangerous, they're not safe for the environment. So we're looking for new and interesting products. Companies are aware of this and the market seems to be growing every second. But all of those safe alternatives have hit quite a few speed bumps. Newsflash, pretty much all menstrual products suck. I know, I hate to be the one to drop the news on you, but unfortunately, I don't really ever share good news. For example, there's the company Lola, which sells a line of organic products. Started by Jordana Kier, it's an alternative to tampons full of dyes, synthetic fabrics, and fragrances, which, quick side note, why do we even need to do that in the first place? We're just looking for functionality. Not everything has to look pretty or smell good. When Lola came around, they promised to fix that issue. And as an added bonus, they have worked with organizations working to end the sales tax on menstrual products. Regardless of what I'm about to say, this shit really needs to happen. But unfortunately for Lola and their customers, despite all the good they promised, they might have fallen flat. In July, 2021, a class action lawsuit was introduced that claimed Lola tampons could unravel at the least opportune moment. Allegedly, the products don't have the protective coating that stops them from falling apart while inside. One woman says she bought the products from Walmart and upon first use, found they had disintegrated and left pieces of cotton behind. And I'm sorry, but that sounds terrifying. This lawsuit does seem to still be pending, so we will have to see what happens there. Now there is another lawsuit against Procter & Gamble that was filed in 2022, claiming that their 100% organic tampons included titanium dioxide. Kotex, who sold their own type of organic and safe product, recently agreed to a $7 million lawsuit for selling defective tampons. Basically, if you look up the words tampons and lawsuits, you'll get a couple pages worth of companies that have been sued for defective products or false advertisement. It's upsetting to say the least. Now, you may have been one of those people that turned to the menstrual cup in recent years. And while they may seem messy as hell, it's easy to see the appeal. They can be washed and reused. That's great for the environment and wonderful for your wallet. Because we all know that menstrual products cost way too much money. But are they safe? Well, kind of. 
Unfortunately, the cups are still associated with TSS or the toxic shock syndrome, but the risk is way lower than with a tampon. However, you are more likely to experience some irritation and the cup could possibly suction to your cervix if you're not careful. It's rare, but it's possible. However, I don't find the list of lawsuits that I do with underwear or tampons for this product. So it seems that this might just be your best bet if you're uncomfortable with a pad. Unfortunately, it still seems like we're pretty far away from getting products that are completely safe, reliable, and hopefully not expensive as hell. I hope whoever creates it does it fast and doesn't torment their employees in the process. Maybe one day we won't have to worry about health implications of simply trying to survive during the already miserable time of the month, but I won't exactly hold my breath. And with all of that being said, that is where we are going to end today's episode of The Corporate Casket. I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it. I know there's a million and a half things you could be doing, and yet you you know, chose a couple minutes here with me. So thank you so much. As always, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.